Hello everyone, welcome back to another Warhammer 40k 8th edition battle report. 1500 points of the Death Guard going up against 1500 points of the Ultramarines today on a new table setup, uh, going for like a swampy kind of look with the sunken buildings and such like. We're also going to be trying a custom mission. Now I know from watching other videos on YouTube, anytime there's a custom mission they're always overly convoluted. This is going to be super simple, honestly. Believe me, you'll see in a second. We'll go over the army list first. Uh, then we'll deploy, we're just going to do hammer and anvil deployment for this to try this out and then we'll very briefly go over the, the custom rules. Let's get started. It's a very elite low number of models, mostly Primaris Ultramarines list here, being led by Robot Gilliman. Given the Ultramarines kind of like whole Roman thing, it's probably Rabuti, but I've always pronounced it Robot Gilliman, so we're just going to go with that. He's a Lord of War, he is the Warlord, finally seeing some time on the table. I love its model even though it is absolutely just way beyond my painting capabilities. So he is the Warlord, but we also have a battalion backing him up, being led by a Librarian in a Phobos armour, and that's from the, the Shadow Spear box. We'll be seeing more of them as they're painted. Backed up by an Eliminator squad, which are like the, the primary snipers from the same Shadow Spear box. Troops to Intercessor, five man, just as they come. At the back here, Hellblasters with the heavy variant of their weapon. Then we have the Storm Talon gunship finally getting a flyer on the table. Did I say the right one? Is it Storm Talon? I think it is. Either way, with twin assault cannons and Typhoon missile launcher, I think. Then we have Centurion Devastators. They're just rocking Hurricane Boaters and Heavy Boaters due to points. And the Redemptor Dreadnought fully kitted out. Icarus launcher on top. Plasma incinerator. Gatling gun underneath the hand there. For both sides, we're also going to be using the, the Bolter Drill rules. Sorry, not Bolter Drill. Bolter Discipline. As they're now no longer test rules, they are just incorporated into the rules. These lists were made before that, the, the big update in April, but we're going to be using them now as well. And it affects both sides, so that should be fine. Alright, uh, let's take a look at the Death Guard list. Just real quick before we go on to the Death Guard list, I forgot to mention that the Librarian in Phobos armor has the Armor Indominus as the free relic. So here we have the 1500 points of Death Guard being led by Typhus, the Destroyer Hive host. Finally seeing him on the table as well. He is being backed up by a Demon Prince of Nurgle. This is a Nurgling that got promoted to Demon Prince. He has wings, I think he has a Plague Spear, although I guess in his case it's just terrible flatulence. And then we have another couple of new miniatures, the Tallyman and the Plague Doctor, hopefully in focus. Death Shroud Terminators 5 using the old Typhus model to show which one is the champion. 14 Plague Marines, one of which has a Plague Spear as well, I think. 20 Poxwalkers because Typhus buffs Poxwalkers. Oh, also the Demon Prince has the, the separating plate because why would you never take that? <laughs> then you have Bloat Drone, Blight Hauler, and Plague Burst Crawler, fully upgraded, uh, upgraded rather, in that case. I think that's it. Again, points were a little too low to, to bring Mortarion out, but at least we're getting to see Typhus finally. So here we are with both armies deployed. Uh, just to go over Warlord Trace real quick, uh, Robert Gilliman has a set one that gives three extra command points. Typhus has an extra one that I can't remember what it does offhand. Either way, we went with Hammer and Anvil deployment. As far as the custom mission is going, uh, oh, should also mention these lists were made before this mission it was kind of made up on the spot when we were putting the table together, it was just kind of a burst of inspiration. Just happened to set up, so it kind of looks like there's an Imperial Shrine at this corner of a table. At the far end of the corner there, guarding a precious collection of Blu-rays, is a, a Nurgle garden that's sprouting up. So it looks like both forces want to protect both sections of the map, and that's exactly how we're going to play it. So, the way it's going to work is that for any enemy unit, within four inches of either objective, so if a Death Guard unit gets within four of this, if an Ultramarines unit gets within four of the Nurgle Shrine over there, uh, as long as it's alive by the end of a full turn, so both people have had turn one or turn two, etc., one victory point. Simple as that. It doesn't matter if there's an enemy contesting because they are still putrefying the land with their presence, so that you still score points. So it's kind of a mix, it's kind of like the old 3rd edition taking hold, if I remember rightly. So you've got to kind of balance your troops between defending the home ground and seizing the enemy ground. But to force or convince both armies to move as well, real simple bonus objective, this thing in the direct centre of the map, 
approximately 12 inches away from both starting forces because of hammer and anvil. That will give two victory points following the normal rules for claiming an objective only at the end of the game. So that will force a little bit of tussle in the centre. Other than that, the usual bonus objectives. Slay the Warlord, First Blood, Linebreaker. That is it. So we can take a quick look to see how the forces of Nurgle have deployed. The drones over there, the Demon Prince, Play Burst Crawler. Big blob of Poxwalkers with Typhus and the Plague Surgeon are guarding the, the Nurgle Garden. And over here we have the huge blob of Plague Marines. The Death Shrouds have opted not to Deep Strike, so they're just over here with the the, uh, I was going to say Plague, Bur Plague Burst Crawler, no, and Malefic Blight Hauler, that's the one. These names. And then over here, obviously the Ultramarines don't have very many models, so they are all deployed. The Hellblasters and one unit of Intercessors is guarding the Shrine. Robert Gulliman is kind of leading the charge here. Uh, the Eliminators can deploy as long as they're 9 inches away from enemy deployment, but they're kind of spread out. Well, 9 inches from enemy's deployment and enemies. So they couldn't really go very far, so they're just perched here. The Vanguard, uh, the Librarian in Phobos Armour is there. I forgot to mention his Psyche powers. He has Scryer's Gaze and Mind Raid. Gotta be real careful how you say that second one. So, uh, we already rolled off. Death Guard are going first. Unless the Ultramarines can steal the initiative. They stole the initiative. Okay then. Ultramarines turn one. So at the end of Ultramarines turn 1, they did a little bit of damage, but there were some very disappointing rolls from things not close enough to Robert Gilliman to get the full re-rolls. Uh, let's see, in terms of movement though, the Storm Talon moved up, as did the Redemptor, and then in the middle here, the Intercessors, Gilliman and the Devastators moved up, as did the Phobos Armor Librarian. The Eliminators stayed still, and back here, the rear guard of the Hellblasters and the other Intercessors, they stayed put. In the Psychic phase, the Phobos Librarian casts Scryer's Gaze on the Eliminators. It can only be used on units with Phobos Armor, so the Eliminators are the only ones who benefit. And that gives them a full reroll because they were out of range of the, the 6 inch full rerolls on Hits and Wins for Gilliman. They shot, because they can target a character, at the Plague Surgeon. The, the, they have a few different round types they can choose from. They chose the one that hits the hardest and managed to take two wounds off of him, leaving him on two. Uh, the Centurion Devastators split their fire. The two that could see it shot at the Plague Burst Crawler with their Heavy Bolters because the Hurricane Bolters are out of range. The other one shot at the Plague Marines. The Plague Burst Crawler, Plague Burst Crawler is down to 9 wounds. And one Plague Marine died. Over here, the Redemptor did not shot absolutely everything into the Death Road Terminators. Only managed to kill one of them. The Storm Talon shot everything into the Death Road Terminators and did absolutely nothing. They did have AP, it's just good rolls on one side, bad rolls on the other. So no first blood. They did almost kill a character, they killed a Death Road Terminator. They wounded a very sturdy Toughness 8 tank, but that's about it. So now we're passing it over to Death Guard, turn 1. At the end of Death Guard turn 1, the Bloat Drone and the Demon Prince kind of shuffled up the side here. Typhus stayed still, buffed his Poxwalkers with Blades of Pooch Fraction and Miasma Pestilence. So minus one chance to hit uh, the, the left squad. I, I keep forgetting that there are two separate squads. The line here is one. He cast everything on this squad closest to the thing. They're minus one to hit and plus one strength and toughness. On top of the bonus he already gives Poxwalkers. The Plague Burst Crawler fired his Mortar at the Redemptor Dreadnought to no effect. He fired his Entropy Cannons at the Intercessors nearest the middle because they were the closest target, managed to kill one outright. The Plague Marines that could see them also shot into the Intercessors and got one down to one wound. Actually, just realised, the Plague Marines shot first, so the Entropy Cannon should have killed that one because he already had a wound. So actually, caught a mistake, finally. He's just dead, so I mean, we still... It still equals one Intercessor dead, but the one that had a wound should have died. Forgot the order in which the shooting had occurred. So we caught that anyway, and now if we just sail around the battlefield here, usually I edit out these pan shots, but why not? The Redemptor Dreadnought suffered terribly at the hands of the Malefic Blight Hauler. His multi melter there we go, hit, crack missile hit. I think the wound rolls on them, or sorry, the damage after the wounds were failed to be saved, was a six and a five. Ridiculously lucky. The Redemptor's down to three wounds remaining, so he is definitely he's fighting in his lowest bracket now, I think. 
didn't give up enough to die and give up first blood, but he is hurting real bad. The Death Shroud's just kind of shuffled up. Everything ignored the Storm Talon here. And I think that covers it. Uh, yeah, I think that was it. So they also bloodied the Nose of the Ultramarines. We'll see how they retaliate as we go into their turn too. End of Ultramarines turn 2, and that was an exceptionally effective turn. Where was this army on turn 1? I mean, everybody knows that having a bubble of units around Gulamin is just a little bit strong, to put it politely. I had no idea it was just it was this strong. I think the done thing is to surround them by like 10 man Hellblasters, but even with the Centurions, and Intercessors, etc., it makes a difference. <laughs> on that subject, there are 5 more Hellblasters in progress. Just. To, to see how it is. Anyway, the Redemptor did not fell back because he's hitting on fives and he's three wins away from death. He did shoot everything into the Death Shroud Terminators in an attempt to, to kill a few more. Did absolutely nothing. Even with the re-rolls, it was just... He, he can't do anything, so he backed off. The Hellblasters, because these are the heavy types, so they have 36 range, the ones that could see, shot all the way over here at the Malefic Blight Holler and got him down to six wounds. Gulliman, his intercessors, and uh, the Librarian, no wait no, the Librarian didn't shoot because it was out of range. Shot into the Death Shrouds, did some good work, killed two of them, there's two left. Uh, oh, also Squire's Gaze got cast on the Eliminators again. The Centurions, with their Hurricane Bolters and Heavy Bolters, all shot into the Plague Marine squad and decimated them. There's two left alive once all those bodies are removed. You'll also notice that the poor Tallyman is dead. That was the Eliminators getting three wounds through this time, and he was first blood, the, the Talonman dying there. The Plague Burst Crawler at the far end, the Drone and the Demon Prince, they're all ignored. The Storm Talon swooped up here. Next turn he is going to be able to get some points for claiming the, or being next to, the Nurgle objective. In this turn though, he just killed four buffed up Poxwalkers, and that's it. So, a much more effective turn. Uh, I don't remember if we checked the Plague Marines' morale, so they might run as well. But we'll move on to Death Guard turn 2 and see if they can recover. End of Death Guard turn 2, we'll start at this end of the table and just uh, work our way down. Typhus casts Smite on the Storm Talon, and well, it's got four wounds remaining now, but also the Plague Burst Crawler shot its Mortar Cannon at it and uh, did a couple more. I think it, was, it had six or seven prior to it hitting it. And now it is taking into consideration the hard to hit roll because it's in full supersonic flight so it's minus one to hit it. Doesn't matter, it's pretty badly wounded. It has to survive the entirety of turn three if it wants to generate some points once it gets next to the objective. We'll see if that happens. The two surviving plane wounds did not run away thanks to command point insane heroism or whatever it's called. They're hiding behind a rock there. The uh, Fetid, no this isn't the Fetid Bloat Drone, this is the Malefic Blight Hauler. He moved up, he shot his multi melter and Rocket Launcher, although as it turns out it just needed the multi melter into the Redemptor Dreadnought, did a staggering 6 wounds when it only needed 3. It doesn't explode, but the Redemptor is exploded, destroyed, out of commission. Did not do as well in this match as it has done the last few times it's been run, but yeah, everyone's going to have a bad day. The two surviving Death Shroud Terminators managed to make it into combat with the Intercessors. They didn't take any damage on Overwatch, they didn't take any damage when the Intercessors hit back, but they struck out and killed two of the Intercessors. Their morale held. Speaking of uh, the Plague Burst Crawler over there, a bit of misplaced units here meant that the Phobos Librarian was the closest target for the Entropy Cannons. He got a hit, so used the once per game Armor of the Indomitus, 3 plus invulnerable, just to avoid having to take d6 damage. So he, he didn't take anything as a result. Over here, let's zoom in. We've decided this Nurgling Demon Prince is called Bob. Bob the Nurgling Demon Prince. He cast Smite on the Eliminators and killed one of them, but that was actually a bad thing because then that meant they were out of range of the Spitters on the Blight Drone, so it couldn't do anything, but it is heading after them. Their morale has held, but their effectiveness has obviously been cut by a third. Moral wounds get through having camel cloaks, as it turns out, who would have known? So that's as things stand at the end of turn two. Let's move on to Ultramarines, turn three. At 
End of turn three for the Ultramarines, and that was another very effective turn thanks to the Gulmin bubble of reroll all failed wounds and hits and what have you. Uh, the Eliminators didn't do as well with one of their number missing. They shot the rounds that don't need line of sight, so they're basically just like firing real guns. They shot them through the boulder there to try and take out the Plague Marines, but they made their disgustingly resilient and survived. These Turin Devastators shot everything into the Fetid Bloat Drone and killed it. Just the amount of fire they can put out with Hurricane Bolters and the, the Bolter Discipline rule. And Heavy Bolters as well. Just on top of that, it's just... It's very good DACA, as Orcs would say. Oh, and the Psychic Phase... Oh, nothing got cast, actually, I think. Forgot. Anyway, doesn't matter though. Guleman and the Phobos Armor Librarian jumped in to save the Intercessors and murdered the two surviving Death Shroud. But Librarian actually didn't get through their armor. It was Guleman with his just staggering amount of damage that managed to get into them. Uh, let's see, what else? Over here, the Storm Talon is now next to the objective. If it survives the enemy turn, keep in mind it only has 6 wounds left, it will generate a victory point for the Ultramarines. Uh, it shot everything into Blade Burst Crawler. Blade Burst Crawler is pretty tough, it's uh, toughness 8. Only did one more wound, so it's down to 8 wounds remaining. I think that covers everything. Oh, you know what? No, it didn't. Come over here. The the heavy plasma wielding Hellblasters overcharged, even though there was nothing protecting them. Thankfully, none of them exploded themselves, and they destroyed the Malefic Blight Holler. End of a very quick Death Guard turn three. The, these, this game is going to be short in general, I think. It's just the Death Guard has not been able to offer up a defense against the gloom and cheese bubble, as we tend to call it. Uh, anyway. Typhus cast Smite on the Storm Talon, did three wounds, so it's on half health. Other than the Mortar itself, the rest of the Plague Burst Crawler's gun shot at it, but didn't do anything. It's Plague Burst, well sorry, it's actual Mortar shot at the Centurions and did one wound to one of them over here. The only other thing of importance that happened was that the Bob the Nurgling Demon Prince failed to cast Smite, but then he just charged into the Eliminators and just defecated all over them and murdered them. So he's safe within those ruins. He's the only chance the Death Guard have, really, as we go on to Ultramarines turn four. Oh, just a quick addendum, and just to be clear, the Storm Talon survived the entirety of turn three, so he has generated the Ultramarines one victory point for uh, staying in the territory of Nurgle. End of Ultramarines turn four, and this is very much pick on Bob the Nurgling Demon Prince this time around. Uh, the Librarian in Phobos Armour shot him, the two surviving Intercessors shot him, although they shuffled as well. Uh, Robert Guleman shot at them, the Hellblasters overcharged and this time one of them exploded themselves. They shot at him. Um, finally, the Centurion Devastators, they were being held back in case they could get to shoot at the, the Plague Burst Crawler. Sadly, they didn't. They had to shoot at the, the Nurgling Demon Prince and they killed poor Bob. Bob is dead. So now the Ultramarines have absolutely no chance of their hallowed Imperial Shrine being invaded by the forces of chaos, but they can still push on to see how many more points they can generate. On that subject, a couple more wounds got knocked off the Play Burst Crawler by the Storm Talent which has gone into hover mode. That means it loses its minimum 20 inches movement range, it doesn't just need to pivot 90 degrees or up to 90 degrees. It also loses its plus one to hit stuff that isn't fly and minus one for things to hit it. It can also be charged in combat now as well. Taking a big chance that it's going to survive but just going for an extra point because otherwise it would have had to shoot down this side of the table here. So back over to the Death Guard for their penultimate turn. End of Death Guard turn four. They actually did a little bit of work that turn with what little they had left. It was mostly the Plague Burst Crawler, but uh, over this end, the Storm Talon has been destroyed, it did not blow up. Didn't matter that it went to hover because the Typhus Casting Smite is what finished uh, its remaining two wounds off, two, three wounds, whatever it was, with just a normal Smite. Uh, over here though, two Centurions, the one that was on one wound and one fresh one, died to the full barrage from the Plague Burst Crawler, which unleashed into it. The two surviving Plague Marines said, hey, remember us, and snuck around from behind the boulder. The one with the plague, well, the one that has a plasma gun is the one with the plague spewer. It shot, did nothing, and of the, the rapid firing bolt gun, or the, sorry, the bolt gun. Yeah, it would be rapid firing, it was in half. It's incorporating the new ways you can get rapid fire for Space Marines to fire twice 
is making me forget the way it always has been, apparently. Anyway, they shot into the Centurion and did nothing. It was the play burst crawler that wiped them out. Thanks to Ghoulman being nearby, though, they didn't uh, have any morale issues. So now it's going to be the final turn for the Ultramarines. What can they hope to do here? Secure line breaker, I guess, on top of holding the middle objective, which is going to give them two points, unless it gets contested, because that just follows the normal rules for objectives, but let's see. So at the end of turn five for the Ultramarines, and we only played till turn five here to keep things from going overly long, although that didn't really matter here, but let's ignore that for a fact. Um, there was some shuffling just with Gulliman, the Phobos Librarian, and the surviving intercessors to hold the middle objective. The surviving Centurion tried to kill the Plague Marines, uh, only killed one of them, opted not to charge, just kind of letting him hang there. Just, just trying to like create a wall to make sure that the Plague Marine can't get close enough to claim. Plague Marines are slow, so it's not really going to be an issue. It's just going to come down to what the Plague Burst Crawler shoots at in the final Death Guard phase, honestly. So let's move on and see what happens. So for Death Guard turn 5, the mortar itself shot at the Centurion and missed. The Entropy Cannon and Rat Hail fired at the Intercessor it could see and killed it, but their morale held, not that it mattered, because even if they ran, the middle objective was still being held. So that's going to draw the game to a close. I don't, I don't know if we really explored the mission type as well as we could have, because the main thing here, like regardless of what mission we were playing, the units probably would have moved in the same way regardless. The bubble with Gulliman, it was going to go up the centre regardless, because it was just kind of, I wanted to see what he could do. Uh, the Death Guard could have had like the Death Shroud and the, the Fed Blow Drone and the Demon Prince together to form like a, a wall to fight them, but I, I, Gilliman is just very, very powerful, so I don't think it would have changed the outcome. It was brutal. If you could somehow like crack Gilliman open and get him out of there, like, for instance, in the final round when one Centurion Devastator just had to kill two Plague Marines, without Gulliman being nearby for the full rerolls on hits and wounds, all of a sudden you're not killing nearly as many models. It's just it's such a powerful ability. You do have to have a model for whatever unit's affected by it within six, but even up to 12 inches away you get reroll failed morale and reroll misses of one. He's just, he's so powerful. Mortarion is powerful too, but he also can be targeted because of his wound count from anywhere and uh, is very hard to miss, whereas Robert Gilliman, he has to be the closest target. I guess if you were up against an army that had something the equivalent of the Eliminators, then you could start picking him off that way, like a Vindicare, I guess. Speaking of, I was worried the Eliminators wouldn't be able to do very much just because you only can have three of them, you can't improve the squad size, uh, and they only get one shot each, or D3 if you fire a certain type of ammo. They did really well, their ability to pick off tar characters, ignore cover, shoot through cover. If you buff them just a little bit by having Gulliman nearby or, as I was doing with the Phobos Librarian, it makes a huge difference. In terms of victory points, Ultramarines got first blood, they had the Storm Talon next to the Nurgle Garden for one turn, and they have the middle objective for two victory points, which gives them a total of four victory points, playing against zero. Very low scoring match. It was trying something different, but as I say, even if it was a bit of a dud mission-wise, I don't know, I'm open to feedback on that. I feel like the battle would have gone this way regardless. Although I guess if you had Typhus and the Poxwalker army up front, they would have soaked up a lot of fire to let the Death Shrouds get in. Mmm. Because the Poxwalkers, they hung back to pad out the garden, and Typhus stayed with them because the whole point of Typhus is to buff Poxwalkers. You know what, it probably did make a difference. Like I said at the top of the video though, we made these lists before deciding the mission. Usually we just roll d6 on the, the rulebook, but tried something a bit different. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the Robbie Moore 40k battle reports to come in the future. There's also a lot more battle, uh, Batman miniature game battle reports too. We'll play on the same table next time. Normal missions out of the rulebook. Different armies of some variety. We shall see. Anyway, thank you for watching and to have for now.